Meet the Bergmans. Three busy kids, two working parents, one new aquarium. Welcome to the hobby, Bergmans. Thanks. We're really enjoying it. As you can imagine, this family has a lot going on, but yet their aquarium is thriving. That's because they have the new My Aquarium app from Tetra. How's it working out so far? So far, so good. We haven't missed a filter replacement yet. Nicely done. Thank you. You're welcome. With the new My Aquarium app, aquarium owners can stay on top of the things that are important, like feeding and maintenance tasks, keeping track of products, water testing, and water care. In other words, the app makes aquarium keeping easier than ever. Am I right, Bergmans? Yep, that's what I thought. Until next time, thanks for sharing. I'm Megan Bergman. This is my life, and this is my aquarium. is an excellent device to measure salinity and specific gravity in your saltwater or reef aquariums as long as they're calibrated correctly. We're going to go through the steps of calibrating this refractometer and they're pretty much all the same but go ahead and check your manufacturer's directions and make sure your steps are identical to these. We're going to use a product by aquatic experts called Accubrate which will be our calibration solution and we I like to recalibrate my refractometer after every couple of uses. The the solution here is set at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It has a specific gravity of 1.0264 and a salinity of 35 parts per thousand. So it's set at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Does that mean for me to get an accurate reading that this has to be 77 degrees? My water has to be 77 degrees. My room temperature has to be 77 degrees. No, it doesn't. What it's saying is what we've got nowadays though is actually refractometers has an ATC you can see here which stands for automatic temperature compensation. So as long as my test solution and my refractor or refractometer are the same temperature, I'm going to get an accurate reading every time. So what we normally do is we're actually going to set, once we set our solution on here, we're actually going to set it down for one to three minutes to let the temperature slowly acclimate of my test sample to the same as my refractometer. So we're going to go ahead and begin here and using our test solution. Before we do, I want to go ahead and clean off my refractometer for my last use to make sure there are no, no salt deposits, no dust, things like that. And so I'm going to use distilled water. And I prefer distilled water, but if you have reverse osmosis DI water, reverse osmosis water, whatever the purest water is you have, go ahead and use that one. I'm going to open the cover up here. And all I'm going to do is take some of the water with my pipette, rinse off my prism, and make sure my prism is good and clean and make sure there's no salt deposits there. I'm also going to rinse off my cover. Now I'm going to use my calibration solution to go ahead and calibrate my refractometer. Now I want to shake it to make sure it's all mixed up here before I use it. And I'm going to go ahead and add two to three drops to my prism here. The cool part about this bottle is it has a pipette or an actual dropper built into the top of the bottle. So I'm just going to put on about two to three, I'm going to put on three drops and I'm going to close my lid up. And what I'm looking for on the top here is I want to make sure there's no bubbles or air pockets in there. If there are, I'm going to open this lid back up again, and I'm going to add another drop or so to make sure it's completely covered. At this point, I would normally lay it down and let the temperature become the same as my solution I'm testing. But in this case, it's been sitting here beside each other for the last 30, 40 minutes or longer. And so I know my temperatures are the same as my refractometer, same temperature as my calibration solution is. So I'm going to go ahead and look into it and see what my what it actually reads. And so what I'm looking at is I'm actually seeing a scale inside of here. I'm pointing to the light. I'm seeing a scale. The left-hand side of the scale on this refractometer 
shows my specific gravity. The right hand side shows my salinity. And when I'm adding salt solution, there's actually a blue, a pretty blue comes down from the top. And it has a line, basically the edge of the blue line. I'm reading the edge of the blue line to, on the scale to see what my specific gravity or my parts per thousand is. In this case, as I look through and adjust my eyepiece, I'm sitting about 34 parts per thousand on my salinity. So I want to move it up just a little bit. And so I'm going to adjust it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this rubber cap. And below there is a calibration screw. And I'm just going to slightly turn this calibration screw, screw just a little bit. And I'm going to recheck it again to make sure it is correct. And that looks good. So I'm very happy with where it is right now. I'm going to close it back up again so I'm about where I want to be. And now I'm going to go ahead and actually rinse off. I'm going to close this back up. I should have closed it up originally. I'm going to rinse this off again with my cleaning solution of distilled water. And at this point, I'm actually ready to test my sample. I'm just going to clean all of the old salt off my calibration solution. This is looking good. I'm going to dry it off. Now that we're dry, we're going to move this out of the way. And now we're actually going to bring in a sample from our aquarium. And now we're going to measure this to see if this has what my specific gravity or salinity is of my saltwater aquarium. And again, we're going to put it down. That didn't go quite as much pretty as I'd like it to be. I'm going to add one more drop over here because I splashed some out. And that looks good. And again, I'm going to look up into the light and check it. And this is reading at 1.023 on my specific gravity. That's where I want it to be. This is a saltwater fish only tank. I'm happy with 1.023. If it was a reef tank, I may want to be at 1.026 specific gravity. Or if it's a fish only, some people like it to keep it a little lower salinity at about 1.020. And so if I wanted to raise or lower the salinity, if I wanted to raise it up for a reef tank, I would take some of this water out of this tank that reads 1.023, and it'll mix a little richer concentration of salt water, add it back to the tank, or if my salt's too high in my tank, I would just remove some water and add some reverse osmosis, DI, some RO water, or some pure water back to lower my salinity back down again. So I'm very happy at this point. Uh, everything's where it should be. Again, I'll calibrate this every so often. Uh, you may have noticed that I did forget to set my refractometer down for a couple of minutes, one to three minutes, to make sure the temperature was the same. Make sure you do that. I got a little bit of a hurry, um, so it may not have been as accurate, but do, do set it down. Do let it rest for a few minutes to get those temperatures the same. At this point, I'm just ready to clean off my refractometer, and I want to store it safely because it is a scientific equipment, so I want to clean it thoroughly, and once I feel like it's nice and clean, I'm going to dry it off and then I'm going to put it into my storage case to make sure that it's safe for next time. And that's it. As I suggest every so often, usually after every two to three uses, please recalibrate your refractometer and you'll be getting great results. If you're interested in buying one of these products, links to all the products mentioned in this video are in the description down below. If you like and found this video helpful, don't forget to give a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching.